Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to this new video. This time I want to show you how to enable SSH server service on your Kali machine so that you can connect to it remotely. Remember, when you are working on your Kali system, you can use some of the tools from the GUI, but other tools you can use from the command line. And perhaps you're going to have the Kali system configured in a different system or set up logged in in a network closet or something and you want to connect to it, right? Because usually Kali is not a, it's not designed to be a desktop operating system you're going to be using all the time. So whenever you want to use the tools, you don't want to physically be in front of the computer, you can connect to it remotely. But for that to happen, you first need to know or you have to make sure that you're running SSH on your system. And one of the ways you can do that is by typing um, which SSH uh, to see if SSH is installed. And most of the time, SSH server is going to be installed on your computer. If you're using Kali, I'm saying by default. If not, just install it just to sudo uh, uh, app install openssh.server. And that's going to do the installation for you. And I'm going to leave that command in the description in case you don't have it installed. But once you install it, you want to find out the status of SSH. So what you can do is um, sudo system ctl status SSH, right? And when you do that, uh, you're going to see that SSH is disabled. Now, the fact that it is installed on your computer does not mean that it's working. It is disabled, right? So if I, for instance, attempt to uh, connect to that, let me bring this, you know, this uh, another remote connection over here. And if I do um, SSH and the IP address of the server, that's going to refuse the connection because that port is not open. So what we need to do here, we need to start the SSH service. So in that case, we're going to do sudo systemctl, and instead of doing status, we're going to do start. And then we're going to enable it, right? And once we do that, if we check the status of the command one more time, you're going to see that it is open listening on port uh, 22, as you can see here. Now, something to keep in mind, you can, if you wish, change the listening port on SSH. It's up to you. The default port is 22. So if you want to change the default port to something else, it's going to have to be maybe a port, obviously, that is not being used. You have to edit the config file, so you can do nano space etsy, you can do, uh, I believe it's ssh, and then ssh hd config, and from here, as you could see, you could change that to something else. Obviously, if you're going to change that, you're going to have to remove the comments, rem it out for that to, to be effective, and restart the service one more time. But it's up to you to do that, right? So I'm just throwing that in there in case you want to do that. Uh, something that I always say, security by obscurity is not that effective. So perhaps changing the port, you're going to you know, hide 22, but it's easy to do a fingerprint and get the information from whatever is running on one specific port. Just throwing that in there. Now, if we go back to our client computer and we try to connect to our uh, server one more time, uh, it's going to ask us, hey, are you sure that you want to do the fingerprint, blah, blah, blah? Say yes to it, of course. And then you, we're going to type in the password to the user that we want to connect to. And here we are. This is my uh, console, as you could see here, Super Kali. And then if I do a... Um, IPA, you're going to see that this is my IP address, 172.168.160.170.15, compared to doing that on my uh, local computer that is a different IP address. As you can see here, I'm 22. 
So I am remotely connected to my Kali computer using SSH. And as you could see, it was super simple. If you found this information useful, all I ask you to do is click on the like button, consider subscribing to the channel. And also, if you need more information about security topics, security tools, vulnerability assessments, I have created many, many videos for that. So thank you for watching and I'll talk to you on the next video.